Ooh, what is up guys and of course welcome back to another Vela Pokemon League battle. Now today we're actually going to look upon one of my teammates versus actually Matt versus Austin. Now Matt here, the QX of the is uh, one of my teammates actually in the Vela Pokemon League. Uh, and I'm going to try to upload games from people that aren't able to upload their battles themselves and find them interesting. And uh, this is definitely one of those really interesting battles, mainly because of the matchups themselves. It's rather interesting from both sides. Uh, now going quickly here about Austin's team here, he has a lot of Pokemon that didn't make it such of course of a Bulu, which is a very interesting Pokemon. Uh, his whole draft is as it follows, Tapu Bulu, Yurashi, Mega Manitrix, Yukin Sagar, Kumala, Comfy, Ms. Magus, Incineroar, and Shuckle. So I very, very, I, I like this team a lot, basically because there is a lot of balance going on, a lot of bulk, and then we have the speedier hitters that really, really stands out. Uh, Math on the other side though, has a lot of interesting team too. A bit more bulk, I would say. Uh, we have Mammoth will kill you know, Crobat, Amundius, Slowbro, Mega Sister, Tarantar, Girder, and Gustlord. And the last Pokemon actually is Electrode. So, as I said, they're both actually players here, has both interesting team, a bit fatter teams actually, with some offensive pressure. Now, I I'm a bit sad that Electrode doesn't make it. I I'll definitely would have said that that would have been really cool. I don't know why I would use it, but hey, it's cool. But by the matchup alone, we can definitely see that Matt is somewhat um, having a tough time versus uh, a Crocune. And this is something that, you know, it's always going to be a factor when versus Sukun. Um, Sukun is, of course, super viable most of the time. And um, the one perk that we're going to give here is that Matt using Gust Lord, which is a really strong, strong set here in general. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I haven't seen the game. I don't know how it actually plays out. I know the outcome, but. Um, that will only give you so much info now, will it? So with that said, let's of course watch the game ourselves. Also sorry for being in this live recording, it means no music outside of my voice. Hopefully we can enjoy it anyway. Um, so yeah, always kind of annoying how slow the start is in this game. So, alright. Um, to start off with Tyrannosaur here is also going to lead off with Randy Savage, the Incineroar. Alright, alright. That's a tough lead, actually, since um, Incineroar can have a really close combat with a superpower. Um, so it's definitely a threat. It has Cross Shop. All right, that could very well take out uh, Tyrannosaurus on that. Yeah, that that's exactly what happens. That's that's what I call him, Randy Savage. All right. <laughs> so that was that was a tough lead. All right, all right. Um, Incineroar is showing off already as the Crobat comes in. Um, good offensive check here. He's gonna switch out, of course. I wonder if it goes directly for Defog here. Or oh, not Defog, I'm sorry. Go for U turn, I mean. It makes the most sense for this environment. Um, yeah, there we go. So Sukun is in. Sukun is always, like I said in the preview, could be extremely bulky and hard to will down. Now, this battle is for a turn, so anything can happen. As a moon just comes in. And this could be really good. I do believe it's forced out here naturally. Um, while Amungus isn't necessarily possibly could able to actually deal with Sukun, but it doesn't have a bound for Call Mind yet. I mean, a plus one Sukun, I'm pretty sure, with substitute can actually shick um, <laughs> Amungus, but it doesn't do that. It goes straight for Yurashi. Um, Yurashi, natural, of course, kind of walls um, the stats from. Um, <laughs> Run among you. Just go for Sporto, I do believe it's a stronger play. Um, I wonder, even if you had even Power of Fire, it's not necessarily do anything. I wonder if the risk with Sin had Bunch of Psychic against you. Um, I see, yeah, Tid does switch out here. That's, I think that's the right call. Uh, Dale Hunter. Alright. Ah! Ah! It's the Lord. It's the Gus Lord. Now, Gus Lord is super bulky with us over, so it could be. Actually, a decent check in this environment. Um, as you actually can pack the Moonblast, should definitely be set here. Uh, and Raining Kiss, I do believe. But here comes the Dark Pulse. This special oriented. Um, wow. Wow, that did some damage. That did some damage indeed. Right, he's going to switch out to Yurashi. Um, probably not packing the Moonblast then. Goes to Randy Savage, as we're going to see Dark Pulse again, I'm sure. <laughs> wow, it still does damage. It still does damage. I, I wonder, could this be Specs? 
that that's an that's an option actually now that I think about it. Now we're probably gonna see U-turn here. Um this is a hit hit him super effectively. Yeah, there we go. Um that's the right play there. Um and definitely good on Ted's part to actually try to soak that with Crobat. I, I do believe that's the right play. Um even if it went for a player blitz, it would be able to actually go for Roost afterwards. So right, Mega Manectric comes in, though clearly not the Mega yet. This is definitely gonna force a switch though, however. Um, question is whether or not Mammoth Swine comes in there to try to soak a Volt Switch. He looks like he stays in. Okay. Alright, this could be dangerous. This could be dangerous. This could be very dangerous indeed. As, um, well, I wonder. Does he. No, he, he is faster. Is Crobat? No. I thought Crobat was 130 base speed. I remember that completely wrong. I wonder. So right, here comes the Mammo. Or, or right, it's scarfed. The Crobat is scarfed. Of course the Crobat is scarfed. I, I'm being dumb. I'm being dumb. Of course it's scarfed. That explains it. So nice checking there already as it goes to Stealth Rocks, right? The risky. Risky, risky, risky. Then again, best play was in the power grass at that point, so I get it. Um, Yurashi should probably wake up this turn. It's little one turn at least as far as I'm aware. As the Volcanion comes in. And there he wakes up, goes for Iron Head. Alright, that's gonna be a soak out of this world. Yeah, that's that tickled. That tickle. Oh, and of course we see life for that's even worse. It's free falling. It's definitely free falling. Alright, Stuffer comes. He's saying the Um alright. I mean Tid is definitely looking to have some very good start momentum here. Definitely has the, the upper hand, not by matchup, but in place. And your Rashi is out of the way, and that could be a very, very good perk for, well, <laughs> for Among Us. I do believe Among Us check is now basically gone. And um, here comes, of course, Sukun. Um, definitely, I mean, if I were um, Andrew, I would probably go over a Call Mind here, or Austin, I mean. Uh, he goes for Hidden Power Electric, though, and it does manageable damage as um, uh, the Steam Option is, of course, the um, returning move here. So if he has hidden power electric, then it's most likely not a call mine suit unit lead. So that's that's good to keep in mind. So it's not as big of a threat here in this environment. Um, though at the same time, suit unit does force Volcano out. out. Um, so Owe Krupp comes in, of course, among us, and um, even kind of statuizing already the dice beam. Oh wait, we have call mine. We do confirm call mine here. Ooh. ooh. This this is, could be nasty. This, this means that we have web skull, we have you know more electric, we have call mine, possibly ice beam. So no passive recovery, I do believe in um, uh, in substitute or protect or anything like that. So no stalling situation. So this could be very interesting. Uh, ice beam should definitely do a hefty amount on Among Us. Um, yeah, there we go. That, that looks about right. As uh, returning play here is for um, wow. Well, that was a bit unfortunate, actually. That that turned out to be fairly dangerous already. Amonius was not checking Sukun, as I was saying there in the beginning. After one call mine, things starts to happen. And this is definitely more offensive, so you can definitely showcase there with the damage output. So, um, yeah. That said, um, one would wonder whether or not he was trying to actually... But he wake up again. I'm sort of like joining while I'm recording this. I'm recording this actually at 6 a.m. in the morning, kind of feeling... Feeling a bit overdone. So <laughs> we go to Terra Smog, alright. That's good. No setup at least. As um question is whether or not he will go for directly for a flare blitz here or for a darkest lariat. Uh both are actually walled by um Gust Lord. Um uh, switching into Marion. Um definitely can soak a possible flare blitz, so he has to hope he goes for that. Uh, as he does. So that's that's good deal with the darkest lariat. I do believe that would have actually well gotten rid of the poor 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 Volcanion. But that would have mean also that Gustler was an option there later. So he's gonna sack it, uh, definitely going for the max maximal damage output on something that four times resisted though. I will say this, it does fairly 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 decent as um, the returning plays are power, clearly, and that's gonna knock out the incinder roll. Hmm. So right, I do believe we have Suki left, uh, we have Miss Mages, and one more. 
and oh damn, that was a morning alarm. Hey, <laughs> hello. <laughs> so it's so alright. Anyway, that's gonna like. I think this is the first Pokemon that he knocks out from Tid. Right? That's yeah. That's the first one. So it took ten minutes before that to happen. Interesting. As the Dale Hunter comes in, um, Gustlord is a lord here. It definitely was Miss Majors, though Miss Majors can pick the Dazzling Gleam and it could do very, very much damage. Actually, Hidden Power. Hidden Power fighting? I maybe, but it is Assault Vest indeed, as the return and play of Gadar Pulse might very well kill Miss Majors, no doubt. Bit surprised we didn't see Dazzling Gleam there. I do believe that would have been a stronger overall option, as the Beast Boo is going to activate his special attack. That means that Sujun cannot come in anymore. As the Saibosh comes in, Alright, this is indeed scary though, because a bandit Psydosh can actually do um, a lot of damage to a lot of mounts rather easy. Um, goes for Outrage even, and that's going to definitely knock out the Gust Lord. Uh, that's too bad, I believe Guster was really cool for this battle particularly, so that was unfortunate. That was really unfortunate. Right, Joe, second comment, and um, yeah, I mean, we have Ice Shard, I believe that's the option to play here. Um, if it lacks that, then it's going to be well more unfortunate. But yeah, he cracked it and that killed. That's why I believe um, a Thousand Arrow would have been a stronger player, depending on the set, of course. But um, just because avoiding this situation, as Sukyo comes in. Now, this is whether or not, I really can't stress this enough, can Matt actually deal with the Sukyo? I mean, at the end of the day, um, Earthquake is not going to suffice here necessarily. Uh, though he doesn't have any recovery outside of leftover, so I, he has a passive recovery, and um, that could very well work in his favor here. As Earthquake actually does KO, and uh, wow, it actually did KO from the range. That is really unfortunate. As uh, I do believe T Dog is the last mon here, and uh, oh dear lord, he really needed that damage on the Mammoth Swine, he really needed that. Ah, oh, it's tough. That's tough. Right, goes for overheat. All right, just going at it. Oh, it KO'd. It actually KO'd. That's that's unfortunate. As you crop comes in, uh, among us, and um, he has to keep going for overheats. And you don't you don't want to be put in that position. You you definitely do not want to be put in that position. As he's gonna switch in Foppa back again, the Crobat. And uh, my best guess here is that Tid is trying to actually force him to go for as much, much overheats as possible so um, his Thunderbolt won't do as much damage because Thunderbolt at this range still kill. So no matter what, his best series of play, in my honest opinion, would be to go for U turn here, hoping for T Bolt. And um, oh, actually go for Roost. That means he couldn't be Scarfed though. That means it couldn't be Scarf. That's that's impossible. I I am perplexed by this. I am perplexed by this by a lot actually. Um, I, I find it, how fast is Crobat already? I'm actually checking it as I'm watching. Crobat base speed. It is slower. It is slower than Mega Manetric. I have no idea why it's faster. I have literally no idea why it is faster. Um. This is this is interesting. This is really interesting. It's just gonna keep roosting here um, and go over cross ups. I do believe this is the remaining turns that are. Uh, as you guys might already have guessed, um, Tid will win this battle 2-0. Though I had no idea this was a series of play to do so. That's actually kind of interesting. Now, one thing should definitely be said here, and this is mainly focused on Basika here, the, the player or Austin. Uh, not at a max speed, Mega Manetric, or anything that checks the speed of Crobat here is literally his downfall here. He, he actually missed out on a chance of killing Crobat when Tid was letting his sane for a U turn. Not being able to outspeed it definitely did hurt him here because that was that was a missed opportunity indeed. But outside of that, I do believe it's a very clean game from both sides. Not a lot of hacks here, which I do believe is the most important part when you play around these games. Uh, major props to Austin for using Incineroar with Cross Shop. That annihilated Tyranitar turn 1. Uh, that was probably one of the more interesting plays here. Uh, to get it with the likes of actually having um, 
Gus Lord in this one, Assault Vessel actually checked both Hirashi and Miss Majors really well. Uh, that said, though, like I said, I do believe the only big mistake here is that Mega Manetric is not fully speed here. Not being able to outspeed Crobat as I thought was actually Scar first because it outspeed him. It made no sense to me while I saw it, but I realized due to Roost that it wasn't Scar. It, I actually had Black Sludge. I probably should have seen it earlier, I didn't. And um, yeah, it did surprise me. Um, it definitely should have um, should gone down that way. And of course, had it went for Mega Manetric over Sukune versus the Mammoth Swine, he would have had been in a stronger position. Um, of course, one with Thick Fat in mind would never think that Mammoth Swine could be knocked out from that range, but it did. And uh, I think had he done that play first and have Sukune still healthy, he would have had a stronger place versus the Amongeus and uh, Crobat at the end. I don't know, if he had had a fully speed variant, Amongeus would have been his last Pokemon. So it would have been a much, much stronger players to go with overheats over and over again. So with that said, you know, GG to both you guys. It was definitely interesting to see you both battle, and uh, I hope to upload, of course, like I said, more VPL Valhalla Pokemon League battles. And uh, yeah, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.